14 Development Respiratory System Formation of the lung buds, when the embryo is approximately 4 weeks old, the respiratory diverticulum, lung bud, appears as an outgrowth from the ventral wall of the foregut, Fig 1a. The appearance and location of the lung bud are dependent upon an increase in retinoli acid, RA, produced by adjacent mesoderm. This increase in RA causes upregulation OF the transcription factor TBX4 expressed in the endoderm OF the gut tube at the site OF the respiratory diverticulum. TBX4 induces formation of the bud and the continued growth and differentiation OF the lungs. Hence, epithelium of the internal lining OF the larynx, trachea, and bronchi, as we us that of the lungs, is entirely of endodermal origin. The cartilaginous, muscular, and connective tissue components of the trachea and lungs are derived from splanchnalc mesoderm surrounding the foregut. Initially, the lung bud is in open communication with the foregut, Fig 1b. When the diverticulum expands caudally, however, two longitudinal ridges, the tracheoesophageal rodigas, separate it from the foregut, Fig 2a. Subsequently, when these ridges fuse to form the tracheoesophageal septum, the foregut is divided into a dorsal portion, the esophagus, and a ventral portion, the trachea and lung buds, Fig 2 BC. The respiratory primordium maintains its communication with the pharynx through the laryngeal orifice, Fig 2D, clinical correlates, abnormalities in partitioning of the esophagus and trachea by the tracheoesophageal septum result in esophageal atresia with or without tracheoesophageal fistulas, TEFs. These defects occur in approximately 1-3,000 births, and 90% result in the upper portion of the esophagus ending in a blind pouch and the lower cement forming a fistula W with the trachea, Fig 3a. Isolated esophageal atresia Fig 14.36 and H-type TEFW without esophageal atresia, Fig 3C each account FOR 4% OF these defects. Other variations, Fig 3DF each account for approximately 1% of these defects. These abnormalities are associated W with other birth defects, including cardiac abnormalities, which occur in 33% of these cases. In this regard, TEFs are a component OF the vectoral association, vertebral anomalies. Anal atresia, cardiac defects, tracheoesophageal fistula, esophageal atresia, renal anomalies, and limb defects, a collection of defects of unknown causation, but occurring M more frequently than predicted by chance alone. A complication of some TEFs is polyhydramnios because in some e types of TEF, amniotic fluid, when swallowed does not pass to the stomach and intestines. AISO, gastric contents and D-slash or amniotic fluid at birth MI enter the trachea through a fistula, causing pneumonitis and pneumonia. Larynx, the internal lining OF the larynx originates from endoderm, but the cartilages and muscles originate from mesenchyme of the 4th and 6th pharyngeal arches. As a result of rapid perforation of this mesenchyme, the laryngeal orifice changes in appearance from a sagittal to a T-shaped opening, Fig 4a. Subsequently, when mesenchyme OF the two arches transforms into the thyroid, cricoid, and arytenoid cartilages, the characteristic adult shape of the laryngeal orifice can be recognized, Fig 4b. At about the time that the cartilages are formed, the laryngeal epithelium also proliferates rapidly, resulting in a temporary occlusion of the lumen. Subsequently, vacuolization and recanalization produce a pair of lateral recesses, the laryngeal ventricles. These recesses are bounded by folds of tissue that differentiate into the false and true vocal cords. Because musculature OF the larynx is derived from mesenchyme OF the 4th and 6th pharyngeal arches, all laryngeal muscles are innervated by branches OF the 10th cranial nerve, the vagus nerve, the superior laryngeal nerve innervates derivatives OF the 4th pharyngeal arch, and the recurrent laryngeal nerve innervates derivatives of the 6th pharyngeal arch. Trachea, bronchi, and lungs, during its separation from the foregut, the lung bud forms the trachea and two lateral outpocketings, the bronchial buds, Fig.2 BC. At the beginning of the fifth week, 
each OF these buds enlarges to form right and left main bronchi. The right then forms three secondary bronchi, and the left, two, fig point five A, thus foreshadowing the three lobes of the lung on the right side and two on the left, fig five FC. W with subsequent growth in caudal and lateral directions, the lung buds expand into the body cavity, fig point six. The spaces for the lungs, the pericardioperitoneal canals, are narrow. They lie on each side of the foregut and are gradually filled by the expanding lung buds. Ultimately, the pleuroperitoneal and pleuropericardial folds separate the pericardioperitoneal canals from the peritoneal and pericardial cavities, respectively, and the remaining spaces form the primitive pleural cavities. The mesoderm, which covers the outside OF the lung, develops into the visceral pleura. The somatic mesoderm layer, covering the body wall from the inside, becomes the parietal pleura, fig 6a. The space between the parietal and visceral pleura is the pleural cavity, fig 7. During further development, secondary bronchi divide repeatedly in a dichotomous fashion, forming 10 tertiary, segmental, bronchi in the right lung and 8 in the left, creating the bronchopulmonary segments of the adult lung. By the end of the sixth month, approximately 17 generations of subdivisions have formed. Before the bronchial tree reaches its final shape, however, an additional six divisions form during postnatal life. Branching is regulated by epithelial mesenchymal interactions between the endoderm of the lung buds and splanchnic mesoderm that surrounds them. Signals for branching, which emit from the mesoderm, involve members of the fibroblast growth factor family. While all of these new subdivisions are occurring and the bronchial tree is developing, the lungs assume a more caudal position, so that by the time of birth, the bifurcation of the trachea is opposite the fourth thoracic vertebra. Maturation of the lungs, up to the seventh prenatal month, the bronchioles divide continuously into more and smaller canals, canalicular phase, and the vascular supply increases steadily, fig 8a. Terminal bronchioles divide to form respiratory bronchioles, and each of these divides into three to six alveolar ducts, fig 8b. The ducts end in terminal sacs, primitive alveoli, that are surrounded by flat alveolar cells in close contact with neighboring capillaries. By the end of the seventh month, adequate numbers of mature alveolar sacs and capillaries are present to guarantee adequate gas exchange, and the premature infant is able to sund. Fig.9, Table 1. During the last two months of prenatal life and for several years thereafter, the number of terminal sacs increases steadily. In addition, cells lining the sacs, known as type I alveolar epithelial cells, become thinner, so that surrounding capillaries protrude into the alveolar sacs. This intimate contact between epithelial and endothelial cells makes up the blood air barrier. Mature alveoli are not present before birth. In addition to endothelial cells and flat alveolar epithelial cells, another cell type develops at the end of the sixth month. These cells, type 2 alveolar epithelial cells, produce surfactant, a phospholipid rich fluid capable of lowering surface tension at the air alveolar interface. Before birth, the lungs are full OF fluid that contains a high chloride concentration, little protein some mucus from the bronchial glands, and surfactant from the alveolar epithelial cells, type 2. The amount OF surfactant in the fluid increases, particularly during the last two weeks before birth. As concentrations OF surfactant increase during the 34th week of gestation, some of this phospholipid enters the amniotic fluid and acts on macrophages in the amniotic cavity. Once activated, Evidence suggests that these macrophages migrate across the chorion into the uterus where they begin to produce immune system proteins, including interleukin-13, ILLP. Upregulation of these proteins results in increased production of prostaglandins that cause uterine contractions. Thus, there may be signals from the fetus that participate in initiating labor and birth. Fetal breathing movements begin before birth and cause aspiration of amniotic fluid. These movements are important for stimulating lung development and conditioning respiratory muscles. When respiration begins at birth, 
most OF the lung fluid is rapidly resorbed by the blood and lymph capillaries, and a small amount is probably expelled via the trachea and bronchi during delivery. When the fluid is resorbed from alveolar sacs, surfactant remains deposited as a thin phospholipid coat on alveolar cell membranes. With air entering alveoli during the first breath, the surfactant coat prevents development OF and air water, blood, interface with high surface tension. Without the fatty surfactant layer, the alveoli would coeus during expiration, atelectasis. Respiratory movements after birth bring air into the lungs, which expand and fill the pleural cavity. Although the alveoli increase somewhat in size, growth of the lungs after birth is due primarily to an increase in the number of respiratory bronchioles and alveoli. It is estimated that only one-sixth of the adult number of alveoli are present at birth. The remaining alveoli are formed during the first 10 years of postnatal life through the continuous formation of new primitive alveoli. Summary, the respiratory system is an outgrowth of the ventral wall OF the foregut, and the epithelium OF the larynx, trachea, bronchi, and alveoli originals in the endoderm. The cartilaginous, muscular, and connective tissue components arise in the mesoderm. In the fourth week OF development, the tracheoesophageal septum separates the trachea from the foregut, dividing the foregut into the lung bud anteriorly and the esophagus posteriorly. Contact between the two is maintained through the larynx, which is formed by tissue of the fourth and sixth pharyngeal arches. The lung bud develops into two main bronchi, the right forms three secondary bronchi and three lobes, the left forms two secondary bronchi and two lobes. Faulty partitioning of the plus plus clinical CORR allotas, surfactant is particularly important for survival of the premature infant. When surfactant is insufficient, the air water, blood surface membrane tension becomes high, bringing great risk that alveoli will collapse during expiration. As a result, respiratory distress syndrome, RDS, develops. This is a common on cause of death in the premature infant. In these cases, the partially collapsed alveoli contain a fluid with a high protein content, many hyaline membranes, and lamella bodies, probably derived from the surfactant layer. RDS, which was previously known as hyaline membrane disease, accounts for approximately 20% of deaths among newborns. Treatment of preterm babies with artificial surfactant as well as treatment of mothers with premature labor with glucocorticoids to stimulate surfactant production have reduced the mortality associated with RDS. Although many abnormalities of the lung and bronchial tree have been described, e.g. blind ending trachea with absence of lungs and agenesis of one lung, most of these gross abnormalities are rare. Abnormal divisions of the bronchial tree are more common, some result in supernumivary lobules. These variations OF the bronchial tree have little functional significance, but they may cause unexpected difficulties during bronchoscopies. More interesting are ectopic lung lobes arising from the trachea or esophagus. It is believed that these lobes are formed from additional respiratory buds of the foregut that develop independent of the main respiratory system. Most important clinically are congenital cysts of the lung, which are formed by dilation of terminal or larger bronchi. These cysts may be small and multiple, giving the lung a honeycomb appearance on radiograph, or they may be restricted to one or more larger ones. Cystic structures OF the lung usually drain poorly and frequently cause chronic infections. Plus plus foregut by the tracheoesophageal septum causes esophageal utresias and tracheoesophageal fistulas, TEFs, Fig 3. After a pseudoglandular, 5 to 16 weeks, and canalicular, 16 to 26 weeks, phase, cells of the cuboidal lined respiratory bronchioles change into thin, flat cells, type I alveolar epithelial cells, intimately associated with blood and lymph capillaries. In the seventh month, gas exchange between the blood and air in the primitive alveoli is possible. Before birth, the lungs are filled with fluid with little protein, some mucus, and surfactant, which is produced by type II alveolar epithelial cells and which forms a phosphoapid coat on the alveolar membranes. At the beginning OF respiration, the lung fluid is resorbed except for the surfactant coat, 
which prevents the collapse of the alveoli during expiration by reducing the surface tension at the air blood capillary interface. Absent or insufficient surfactant in the premature baby causes respiratory distress syndrome, RDS, because OF collapse of the primitive alveoli, hyaline membrane disease. Growth of the lungs after birth is primarily due to an increase in the number OF respiratory bronchioles and alveoli and not to an increase in the size of the alveoli. New alveoli are formed during the FLRST 10 years of postnatal life.